Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. I've got a special episode of Philosophy Friday for you this week because we just had a new version of everyone's favorite ghoul caller revealed. It's Gisa, Glorious Resurrector. Gisa is a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four human wizard that reads, if a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. At the beginning of your upkeep, put all creature cards exiled with Gisa onto the battlefield under your control. They gain Decayed. Decayed means they can't block, and when they attack, you must sacrifice it at the end of combat. Immediately, I had people reaching out to me about parallels between Gisa, Glorious Resurrector, and Turgrid, God of Fright. Both are similar in that they reward you for taking actions that punish your opponents, perfectly normal game actions like destroying creatures that you would want to do anyways. While Gisa is a much more reasonable version of Turgrid, the fact remains the same. These cards aren't fun to play against. Let me explain why most people don't find them enjoyable. First is the deck building aspect. A deck with Gisa at the helm is going to be very straightforward to build. You're going to want to cram as many effects as possible into the deck that strip creatures away from your opponents. This pushes the game into a scenario where you may have a soft lock on the table. More effects that destroy creatures than your opponents have creatures to play. Much of the deck list becomes predictable with little variation. You'll want edict effects like Innocent Blood, creatures like Fleshbag Marauder and his many variations, and ratchet up the value even further with enchantments like Grave Pact. Unlike in many cases of deck building in Commander, every deck led by Gisa will likely contain about 30 to 40 identical cards. That doesn't leave much room for creativity or interesting choices. That's stagnant and predictable. You know what you'll be playing, you know what someone else playing the deck will be playing, and you can consistently do the thing the deck wants to do. And the thing the deck wants to do is make others miserable. That's the second disappointing thing about Gisa and Turgrid. Disproportionate value. What is disproportionate value? When you take one action and it gains more benefit than the effort put in, that's disproportionate value. Cards that pay for themselves are disproportionate value. Largely, that's a fault of our format rather than any particular card. For instance, Ristic Study wasn't designed with Commander in mind. It was designed for one-on-one -on -one play. But in Commander, when there are three times as many opponents casting three times as many spells, you easily get back the three mana you pay for the enchantment very quickly. A ritual like Jessica's Will is disproportionate value. When you pay three mana and make seven mana, potentially also netting three additional cards, that's disproportionate value. You've netted much more than you paid for the spell. The same can be said for many spells that refund their mana or don't cost mana to cast. Typically the benefit is far greater than any cost. And in these instances, Gisa and Turgrid turn every creature sacrifice or destroy effect into disproportionate value. Let's say your opponent spent 5 mana to cast an Acidic Slime. They blow up an opponent's mana rock. You then cast Ghastly Demise, destroying the Acidic Slime. It gets exiled by Gisa and you move to your upkeep. Now you get a 5 mana creature and get to destroy a permanent. Your opponent just spent all the mana and you spent a fraction of it to get all of that value. You got 5 mana worth of effects for 1 mana. That's disproportionate value. Now let's ratchet that up. I mentioned Innocent Blood earlier. 1 mana, each player sacrifices a creature. If you have some fodder to sacrifice, a Thrull token or a Zombie token, you could be spending 1 mana to get the benefit of all of the juicy creatures your opponents need to sacrifice. It could be that your opponents have tokens to throw away as well, netting you very little benefit. But one spell could net you 3, 6, 9, or more mana worth of creatures. Mana you didn't spend, but resources you stripped from your opponents. Disproportionate value. But in this instance, this feels worse than Ristic Study or Jessica's Will or Smothering Tithe because those spells don't take anything away from another player. Everyone's able to do what they want. Their decks can function just fine. But with Gisa and Turgrid, you're stopping players from being able to play. You're snowballing, as it's called, putting yourself in a position where you gain far more value than your opponents combined can generate. They can't maintain a board state, they can't put anything in front of the army you're building. 
when your fun comes at the cost of others being able to have fun, you're starting to turn the format into something most players just don't want to engage with. And that's damaging to the format, to the game, to people's will and desire to play. Now one more example of how Gisa can snowball and create game states that prevent others from playing. I mentioned Grave Pact earlier. Its equivalent in Dictative Erebos is relevant here too. In a deck with Gisa at the helm, these are backbreaking. You generate an army at the same time you continue to strip away your opponent's creatures. In particular, this is because the creatures you gain have decayed, meaning they sacrifice themselves at the end of combat when they attack. And with Grave Pact or Dictate, when a creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So when you lose one creature, you can gain three. Then when you lose three creatures, you can gain nine. This disproportionate value is crippling and snowballs you to where you're putting opponents in a no-win scenario. A soft lock on the board with just two cards, one of which is your commander. There are many that look at Turgrid and Gisa and salivate at the potential. Strong, broken commanders. Give me all of that value and make my opponents miserable. And that's a perfectly fine stance to have as long as you know you have a playgroup that's on the same page. As long as you know that's what everyone at the table is looking for from a game. It's a mantra here on the channel, don't let anyone tell you how to play EDH. And that's perfectly valid here. My feelings are my own and shouldn't impact you whatsoever. But you should think about how your gameplay and game plan affect others. Are you here to play a game of solitaire? Or are you here to have fun with other people? Maybe this isn't a deck to play against strangers, just friends that have a mutual understanding of what to expect. But remember, be considerate of the time and experience of others. There may be only one winner at the end of the game, but that's no reason why everyone can't have the ability to have fun. Let me know what you think about Gisa Glorious Resurrector in the comments below, and what you think about disproportionate value. Does it break games? Is it too much for the format? I love to hear from each and every one of you. As always, folks, good luck and have fun.